Yeah, especially in the metagame where Porygon 2 is kind of everywhere, and you just need to knock off the... Um, you just need to knock off the evil light, evil light on it, and it's way less a threat. But, uh, yeah, like we said before, this is a team from both players. This is like... We're not seeing on Eric's team. We're seeing the fast mode and the slow mode. The fast mode definitely by Arcanine and Tapu Koko. Uh, it, Ar Arcanine depends on, and Kartana. Yeah. But also the Trick Room option with Ar uh, Aracronid, Gastrodon, and Porygon 2. But seeing Aracronid and Gastrodon in the same team is kind of weird, because you can't have both on the field, because you're just absorbing your own Water-type moves. Yeah, I, I, I can't really imagine a scenario in which um, Eric Carrios would bring the uh, Gastrodon, uh, because uh, Tom isn't running any Water Pokémon on his team, so I think Aracronid is probably more likely to make an appearance here. Yeah, definitely. Because, but like, like I said, it's very uh, interesting to see two types of water Pokemon on the team, and the Gastrodon and the Aracronid. So I'm pretty curious to see what kind of Aracronid and Gastrodon this is. Be. Maybe it's like an attack, a really a attack where you have both, just to boost all the time your <laughs> uh, your own Gastrodon with stockpile, the stockpile, and water type moves to get in the end one fat, big, bulky Pokemon. You can't get through it. Yeah, but we're going to be jumping into this game. Uh, Eric Rios versus Tom Plater. And we are going to... Are we going to be seeing their lead soon, hopefully? Yes, we see a lead of Incineroar and Tapu Koko on Tom Plater's end with uh, Porygon 2 and Kartana on Eric Rios's end. We have a classy star, fast start and a Porygon start. So uh, getting yeah the pretty much fast mode here, Tapu Koko and Incineroar doing a, a very good job here because Katana can't do anything big because uh, Katana can't hit uh, Incineroar too strong. Uh, it shouldn't be even enough to take the KO even with the... Um, what's the fight move? I'm sorry? I'm sorry? The, uh, the, the fighting with the Sacred Sword. Thanks, man. Yeah, it shouldn't be even enough. So I see definitely Thomas Platter here in the better position. Uh, he's probably want to stop the Trick Room. So seeing the Protect on Katana here, Pretty sure he's going to bring up this trick room to bring a slow mode, but we are seeing the Volt switch kind of into the Kartana here. But and we see the, the Porygon too. Uh, great play by by Tom here, especially if we see uh, the trick room. But we don't see the trick room; we just see a simple ice beam onto that Tapu Koko, breaking the potential focus sash and the freeze. The freeze. We already have an upset turn one of this tournament. Turn one, first match after all. Now the freeze. Okay, okay. Th Thomas seems still cool because. When you get freezed... Okay, I, now I'm very curious how Eric wants to play, because the quality of a player is like how you act when you freeze. Because the best thing you can do when the Pokémon is freeze, act like it's not freezed. Because <laughs> when you're ignoring the Pokémon, it would always turn off and kick your head. It's very difficult. Yeah, especially, like, I mean, the freeze can... Uh, can go away immediately. We see the, Kart the Kartana switch out. It's not an Assault Vest as we saw the Protect there. And we see the Arcanine switch in for the Intimidate ability. It's going to reduce the attack on the Arc on the Incineroar, especially because that Tapu Koko is potentially not a threat anymore. And no no movement from that Tapu Koko as it stays frozen. And we do see, I believe that is the Flare Blitz onto the uh, Arcanine start. It's not going to take very much damage. Great switch by Eric Rios. Yeah, very great uh, predict. Uh just doing your safe spot and still not going for the trick room. Maybe he's not running trick room, but not going for it. Just taking care of the Tapu Koko. And this is what I said. This is what you see a very uh, qualified player. Don't ignore the, uh, the freeze. Just act like the freeze is there, not there and just keep going taking Tapu Koko because um, he had still the option just to double target the Incineroar or going out and just target the Incineroar. But Tapu Koko is always a threat, if it's freezed or not, so you don't want to get sure. But we are seeing the switch out from Incineroar into the Tapu Lele here, switching yep. the fields. It switches into the fields, uh, putting up that psychic terrain, uh, maybe uh, um, protecting from that extreme speed. But we so see no extreme speed, we just see the ice, uh, the Flare Blitz into the uh, Tapu Koko start, knocking it out. Meanwhile, what are we going to see from the uh, Porygon 2? Uh, we just saw a switch from the other, from Tom Pater's partner's Pokemon, and we just see a uh, Rayo, which is the Thunderbolt onto the Tapu Lele. It's going to do a little bit damage. Uh, maybe wanted to get a little bit of a boost with the Electric Terrain, but uh, not going to happen in the Psychic Terrain. Nice, but anyway, uh, very good to, uh, to know for Thomas now, having the Bolt Beam combination of Ice Beam and Thunderbolt on 
Polygon 2 makes it uh, a lot more easier to predict what kind of set it should be. So if it's a Trick Room, then Recover is definitely the fourth move. So you definitely know what kind of Polygon he's running. This gives you uh, a little advantage here, but bringing the Incinero back in, having again the Taunt pressure, but uh, there still should be one turn off on the Taunt on the Polygon 2, so not hurry. But Incineroar against Arcanine. Arcanine is, uh, in my opinion, by far the stronger Fire-type Pokémon, thanks to the ability of Intimidate. Yeah, but we do just see a simple Psychic onto your Arcanine slot. It's going to do a lot of damage. That's enough to KO it! That must be a bo damage-boosting item, either a Life or Boy Choice Specs. And we see the Taunt again onto the Porygon. You did say that the Taunt did run out. Uh, so, what? and we see no Trick Room. Sigh of relief from Tom there. Uh, uh, guys, I'm sorry for the miscalculation here, not counting the turns right. But what did we saw here? We saw the Arcanine versus Tapu Lele. This is kind of um, one of the most things you can see when you're running Arcanine or Tapu Lele. It's always how, how much speed or how much yeah how much speed are you investing? Because both Pokémon are when you are investing in attack or special attack, able to get the KO on, on, on each other. So it's important what Pokémon is faster. So. Uh, I don't see we saw an item on Tapu Lele, so maybe we're seeing something like... Did we saw the item? We didn't, right? No, we didn't. I mean, we did a lot of damage. I, I, I thought it was going to be like a Life Orb or maybe Choice Specs, depending on what the build on the Arcanine is. If it wasn't a bulky Arcanine, then maybe it was, it's just a simple, maybe a Shattered Psyche. I don't know, but I'm excited to see. But we just see the Incineroar switch out, the Kartana comes in for that slot and said, we see the final Pokémon on Tom Pater's end, and Porygon 2 switches out, not wanting to be taunted, and the Kartana comes out for it. While Tom Pater nods his head there, what do we see? A simple Protect from the Araquanid. Tom nodding his head there, a, a decently safe play, no way to really punish that, except for a Psychic into Kartana, but we just see it go straight into the Protecting Araquanid. Yeah, Thomas Pater, I like the way how he gets he gets Brick in because he lost the Tapu Koko for kind of nothing and still gets himself in a better position right now because having Katana against the Arak uh, is is solid but also it's just an easy switch in for an... but no switch in, we see directly in the Psychic not doing a half damage yeah. but doing a Leaf Blade, a double target into Arak is enough to take a KO. Yeah, that's a big KO right there. We did see the Choice Scarf on the, on the Tapu Lele actually. A Beast Boost on the Kartana with the life with the Leaf Blade KOing it. And we see a Smart Strike in response. It will be able to KO the Tapu Lele in response. And we see a Beast Boost there as well. So we're left with the Incineroar, the Kartana, the Kartana and the Porygon too. <laughs> so uh, now Eric knows by far Tapu Lele was a scarf type because uh, a scarf item because Kartana was slower than the Tapu Lele means Tapu Lele is running this choice scarf. A very important uh, thing Eric knows now, but maybe it's too late because it's very difficult now for Eric. Uh, I'm afraid it depends on now on Kartana. So if it's, if it's going to be a speed tie, maybe we are seeing when you when you have a sash on Kartana by Eric, this should be easier for him. But Ah, difficult, man. It, it could be difficult. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that double target was such a huge one right there. Uh, Porygon 2 really has to rely on its offenses, and the Focus Sashes are really going to be what caught, what uh, wins it. And we see the Protect on Eric Rios' uh, Kartana. Tom Pater uh, fist bumping there, and he's really happy about that. And we see the Z move. Is that a Phytinium <laughs> Z on the Kartana, on the Sacred Sword? It's, but it's definitely targeting that Porygon, uh, Porygon 2. Looking at how, how happy, to happy Tom is right there, we see the all-out pummeling on the Kartana. It's definitely targeting that Porygon 2. Uh, how much damage will this do? I'm super curious to see. It, it should it's be gonna, a it should, we have we are in the plus one. It should be a Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. That does so much damage. We see possibly a flare bit onto that Kartana. Uh oh, well at least it's not a um we at least we we are sure that it's not a focus sash on that end. And we see the I think that might have been in the darkest area onto the Kartana, maybe breaking its focus sash, or maybe picking up uh, any sliver of health that the uh, Porygon 2 had remaining. But wow! Wow! Absolutely wow. There's so much information Eric and Thomas get right now from the first uh, match here right now because knowing your Kartana, it's maybe a speed tie right now and yeah, you're faster, maybe a speed tie, so you maybe oh. know it better. So yeah. Sacred Sword does uh, KO the... Um, now uh, let's see if you're going to see a Sash because when we are seeing the Sash, it should be uh, a speed tie. And here we see the Sacred Sword into the Kartana. Oh, it's a speed tie. It comes down to the speed tie. Neither of them look happy about this. 
Wow. Oh my gosh. This is the best game of this tournament. It's coming down to the wire. It really is a 50-50. Whoever gets this wins the game. Or maybe we're not even seeing a speed tie, or is it? And Tom Plater Tom Tom takes it. it. Yeah, it was a speed tie. Uh, you know, Tom Plater, it very close game. Excellently played by both, pe by, by both people. You know, Eric Rios got a little bit lucky with that ice beam freeze. Uh, turn one, but wow. What a performance from both players. What a performance, yeah, but I'm, I'm thinking about when you're playing not Sash or not Assault West, you have to you have to invest in bulk. So maybe Thomas is investing bulk in the Katana so he don't run max speed. I'm not sure because uh, losing two times the speed time, maybe this is an indicator because Eric don't know it for sure, but uh, Thomas knows it. Thomas knows exactly the speed stat of his own Katana and now he's knowing, okay, he's maybe Maybe he was a speed tie, but maybe he's running just a little bit of speed. So he knows by far, okay, he is uh, had exactly the maximum speed, yeah. what's most likely usual on the choice uh, on the focus session. Yeah, those Katana speed ties, they're rough. I mean, yeah, let's just recap their teams. Eric Rios is running a team of Tabu Coco, Gastrodon, Arcanine, Katana, Porygon 2, and Araquanid, while Tom Plater is running uh, Kartana, Incineroar, Mandabuzz, Tapu Koko, Tapu Lele, and Garchomp. Now, we didn't see the Gastrodon on Eric Rios' end because we correctly guessed that he would bring the Araquanid instead. It's just better in, in this scenario. It is, yeah, but uh, it's always... Gastrodon had kind of usage in London, but now less because Katana become a thing. And you don't want to have a Katana uh, in Gastrodon when your Katana is out there because you can have like four Intimidates on it. It's still a KO. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, Eric Rios is running that... Pretty standard Kartana, but a Vitinium Z Kartana on Tom Plater's end. Really, really exciting. I'm, I'm excited to see uh, what else, uh, what, what other tricks uh, Tom Plater might have up his sleeves. Uh, I don't know how either player can really adapt in this scenario. Uh, pardon? I don't know how either player is going to adapt in this, but in this scenario. Yeah, well, I think Eric got more information from the last round. So uh, starting here, now we're seeing the guest we talked about. Uh, maybe yeah. the better position because uh, Tapu Koko likes to be a leading Pokemon because it's no no much switching option because, yeah. Yeah, we get the special attack from the download on Porygon 2. The Gastrodon making an appearance here. Uh, Tapu Koko Incineroar will lead on Tom Plater's end, while Porygon 2 and Gastrodon is lead on Eric Rios's end. Um, I mean, now... Porygon 2 can't set up the Trick Room because the Taunt is an option. Um, but with the Electric Terrain, Thunderbolt might still make an appearance. But we just see the Porygon 2 switch out immediately in favor of that Tapu Koko. The Tapu Koko that's taunted isn't really a threat, really. Uh, and we just see the sort of threat which is a fake out, breaking a potential focus. Actually, no focus sash on the Tapu Koko. We saw it in the Kartana. And we see a Vault Switch into the Tapu Koko doing a bit of damage. That took it very, very well, even despite the resistance. Um, and what do we see? Uh, Tom Pay to switch in on this on this uh, on this free one. He seems pretty confident with his choice. And it's a Tapu Lele. It's going with the scarf. That's actually a brilliant switch right there. It's gonna set up the um, psychic terrain, removing that electric terrain from Tapu Coco. Meanwhile, what do we see from this gash? Oh, a Z move on this Gastrodon. What is this? Is this the uh, this is this is a tectonic rage on Gastrodon uh, from the earthquake. Uh, it's probably targeting that incineral maybe. Um, yeah, Barrena Telurica in Spanish. And yeah, I think that's a target onto the Incineroar. Let's see how much damage this does. Will it be enough to KO? Uh, I'll be very curious to see. Uh, going to the center of the earth there. And it's, yes, it is enough to KO the Incineroar right there. It should be easy enough, but uh, this is a physical type Z move. It should mm. be because there's no access for Earth Power in this meta game for Gastrodon. Nope. So um, Earthquake is, I think, the next strongest uh, ground move Gastrodon learns, maybe Baldos, I'm not sure, but it should be Earthquake. So, um, should be an easy KO, not eating any Intimidate, so easy go. But now we're seeing the Katana and the Tapu Lele. Tapu Lele, now we know, both players know the Choice Scarf here, so having the fastest Pokemon on field, but fearing that, switching out the Tapu Koko and bringing in the Porygon too. I'm not sure if I'm okay for the play, but it's okay getting a special attack. Yeah, we just see a simple double switch on Eric Rios' end. Not one who can take any sort of Leaf Blades from the Kartana. The Intimidate is going to hit the Kartana quite uh, quite well there. Um, and we're probably going to see a big Psychic onto one of these slots. Probably the Porygon 2 slots as uh, the Tapu Koko was sitting there before. It's going to do decent damage actually to the uh, Porygon 2. And a Leaf Blade onto Arcanine. No critical hit there. And it doesn't do very much damage because of the resistance. So now it's a question how how much Thomas played with the Phidium Z Kartana. So uh, 
He's at minus one attack, getting the Intimidate drop on it, but is Katana able to get the KO with the Z move on Porygon 2? So I would I would say no, because there's no stab, there's no second sword, it's kind of okay move, 80 base percent. But uh, th th there's like the, I don't know, I, I don't know really. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it comes down to whether the Sacred Sword is enough to pick up the KO on Porygon 2. The Arcanine doesn't really want to take a Psychic, as we saw it took, didn't take it very well at all. But we just see it simply switching out for a Tapu Koko. Uh, very, very, not quite risky actually, because the Electric Terrain is going to go up and the uh, Arcanine will be kind of safe from the Psychic actually. And we do see the Psychic onto the, uh, tap onto the Tapu Koko slot, takes it decently well, and we see a uh, all-out pummeling on the Kartana. It's probably tug. What did it target? I'm actually curious to see, uh, because if it's into Tapu Koko, it's going to be a little bit of a waste because the Tapu Koko has no health there. Uh, interesting, that double target, actually. Um, but yeah, all out pummeling. Do we see it onto the Arcanine? No, we see it onto the Tapu Koko. It is going to be enough to KO it, um, pretty definitely. And it's... Ooh, yeah, yeah, it goes down. That health bar falling very slowly. It makes you very, very nervous. Um, but yeah, Eric Rios is playing this one very well. Yeah, it was a really good turn because uh, switching Porygon 2 is just like the, the wall in your team. So just want to saving in it, but let's just finish the turn, guys. Seeing the Flare Blade into the Katana, easy KO, no need much to talk about. So let's just talk about the, uh, the play Eric was doing. So getting your Tapu Koko in had like two big advantages. You get away from the Psychic terrain, you get your own terrain up, so Psychic shouldn't be enough to get the KO on Arcanine anyway. So it's just easy for an Arcanine to hit up on the Katana. Uh, just seeing Thomas wasn't ready for the play from... Yeah, he just thought like he was bringing up the Trick Room, but still don't know if Porygon 2 is running Trick Room or not. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we did see the, we did see the Trick Room actually get taunted away there. Um, but yeah. Arcanine, it took so much damage in recoil there. It, like, it took like 30% from damage. Maybe it's, maybe it's not a bulky set at all. Yeah, that's right. Maybe yeah, it's, it's always difficult. Yeah, we. I mean, we could do uh, our calculator and calc it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, <laughs> Tom Tom Pace is really on the back back foot here. Porygon two. If it sets up a trick room, it's over really. And we just see a psychic onto the Porygon two target. It's going to do a little bit of damage. And do we see the thunderbolt? Is it enough to pick up the KO? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, unfortunately not. And we just see the Flare Blitz probably onto the Tapu... Uh, on, actually, on the Tapu Lele. Uh, does decent damage, uh, bring that Arcanine down to quite a lot of... Uh, down a lot. But it's a Citrus Berry with the uh, Flare Blitz. I quite like that, actually. Uh, let's, let's you recover a bit of that um, uh, recoil damage. And we just see the Trick Room. And I think from here, Eric Rios can really take it. Yeah, and seeing the Citrus Berry is also very interesting because you have, like, Two options to run items in Arcanine or Bulky Arcanine. It's a Citrus Berry or it's a Figgy Berry. But uh, uh, people who are playing the Citrus Berry are always kind of more forced to it. But anyway, seeing forfeiting by Thomas, Eric gets his win. In the, in the second game, pretty solid because he get all the information he wants. And he played so well, bringing it in. Thomas, this is a way, uh, uh, like I said before, Thomas is very hard to predict because he's always switching from defensive and offensive in kind of unpredicting way. So uh, seeing it right now here, Eric just always the safe place, always... He never mm. took a, a really big risk because he's always playing so smooth in the game. Yeah, I mean, that Ground DMZ um, ga um, Gastrodon really just took it from turn one, really. Um, so, you know, that's very important for Tom Plater to take going forward into the next game. And it is, uh, to recap on their teams, Tom Plater is running a team of Kartana, Incineral, Mandibuzz, Tapu Koko, Tapu Lele, and Garchomp, while Eric Rios is running a team of um, Tapu Koko, uh, Gastrodon, Arcanine, Kartana, Porygon 2, and Araquanid. Um, Tom Pater bought all four of his Pokemon in both games. Uh, what do, you, do you reckon you could still adapt a bit? Uh, when I'm looking at Thomas' team, because uh, he, uh, he bring Incineroar in both games, always as lead. But knowing now the Groundium Z on Gastrodon, it makes it difficult for Thomas, because I'm pretty sure Incineroar can easy stand the Scald and there's no burning chance, so get at least one shot to stay in uh, Gastrodon, but having the ground UMZ here is such a huge threat for the Tapu Koko and the Incineroar, so um, Thomas had, had need to find a way how he can deal with uh, Gastrodon, because you can lead you out Katana, sure, 
But having an Arcanine in the back makes always kind of easy, uh, difficult. So I'm pretty sure Eric is going to lead with uh, Gastrodon again. And having the Arcanine in the back, like every player. Yeah. I mean, you, you know how we were talking earlier about, oh, Gastrodon isn't very good in this matchup, is he? Uh, but <laughs> like, uh, we, we saw how much uh, trouble the Incineroar was causing to Eric Rios. So actually, fantastic adaptation to uh, bring along the, the Gastrodon. I mean, we had no idea about that Ground DMZ item, did we? No, we didn't, because but this is... This is this changed everything about because uh, when you're playing when you're facing a Gastrodon, it's like haha, you don't have a ground move, you can't only hit me with your skull, and I don't care about skull. So um, yeah, like I said, we're seeing Gastrodon lead on Eric's side paired with the Arcanine. Maybe he was thinking about an Katana, wasn't he? Yeah, maybe. But we do we do see. The fake out option isn't available for uh, Tom Pato, especially in this psychic terrain. The Gashadon is facing out this uh, Incineral uh, and looking threatening already. Yeah, but now it depends on how, how, how safe Eric wants to play because I'm pretty sure Tapu Lele, the. Um, I, th I think Tapu Lele and Incineral are able to get a KO on Arcanine. No, 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 I'm sorry, Citrus Berry. Never mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, Arcanine. By far has the bulk to stay one Psychic, even in the Psychic terrain from Tapu Lele, so Incident War isn't enough, especially thanks to the drop from Intimidate, not be able to get the KO, so Gas Rune is now the huge threat. Yeah, that's very true, and you know, leading Tapu Lele, yes, it's very good, it puts a lot of offensive pressure on, but now Tom doesn't have that all-important fake-out pressure. Right now he would love to fake out the Gas Rune, but is unable to unless he switches into his Tapu Koko. Yeah, now we're seeing switch out from Incinera out into the Katana. It's always kind of a, a good move because you don't running the Sash anyway, so you can take the Ground Z, you can take the most likely no fire type attack into it. But seeing the Tapu Koko changing the field again, so don't want to take too much damage by Psychic, but seeing yeah. the Psychic into the Arcanine without yep. the, uh, not even not even quite enough without wow. the Psychic terrain. Yeah, and another and, and, and a psychic went into that, and another, it will be able to take another psychic, and we just see a flare blitz onto probably the Tapulele. Uh, yeah, that's going to do quite a lot of damage. Wow, wow, great turn by Eric there. Uh, the Kartana did switch in, wanting to put pressure on that Gastrodon, but uh, since that Gastrodon switched out to the Tapu Koko, this Kartana not looking very pretty right now. No, it's not. But uh, anyway, you can kind of stay in the Tapu Koko, but you don't want to stay in the Tapu Koko because you resist all its attacks, but with a special defense from a Katana, you don't like to stay in the Thunderbolt, but Tapu Koko in the electric terrain. So uh, the offensive pressure is still kind of in Eric's better position because Tapu Lele can barely miss the uh, KO and Arcanine. Maybe we saw a roll, but I wouldn't guess on it. And maybe a single Thomas, but switching out from Katana into his own Tapu Koko, Kind of good because always still a resistance against electric type attacks. Yeah, and we see both the uh, Tapu Koko switch in and the uh, Arcanine switch out actually, possibly preserving that Intimidate. And we see the attack boost on the uh, download there, not too relevant. And we just see a simple Psychic onto Tapu Koko. That is taking it very well. I get the feeling that it's Assault Vest Tapu Koko. Uh, Tom Pater grinning there, he, li he likes himself for a bit of Assault Vest Tapu Koko himself. And we see a Hidden Power onto that Tapu Koko slot. I believe that was Hidden Power Fire, especially because the Kartana was sitting there right there before. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. So, uh, interesting to run Hidden Power because... Uh, okay, right, because we, we saw kind of a little bit of bulk into Kartana, so Hidden Power was a better move. It's okay, I, I'm fine with that, definitely. But Porygon 2 now, he's easily able to get up the Trick Room if you want. And I'm curious to see if you're going to see, because you saw the Assault West, and a uh, move what is very known for Tapu Koko, Ooh. it's... Uh, we see a psychic. Sorry, we yeah. see a, sorry to interrupt you. There, we but see a psychic onto the Tapu Koko. Does a lot of damage. Doesn't quite knock it out. And we see the Volt switch from Tapu Koko into the Porygon. Uh, and we see a free switch on Tom Plater here. He he has to switch into either the Incineroar or Kartana. Um, and we see the Incineroar wanting to apply fake out pressure. Uh, sorry, you were saying. Yeah, I was saying if you're going to see a sky drop here. Oh, but unfortunately we're not because, like I wanted to say, uh, what I really oh. like to see when you have the trick room and trick room and the fast mode, when you're running a assault west Tapu Koko, you can run just the sky drop and sky drop one Pokemon and get up the trick room and just unable one Pokemon to attack for two turns. It's kind of a very gimmicky way to set up your trick uh, trick room, but it's always a cool way. But bringing now the trick room up from Eric's side, having the Gastron field, the slowest Pokemon on the field, and I guess. 
Yeah. No, no, no chance Thomas can be slower than uh, Gastrodon on his team. Yeah, absolutely brilliant trick room right there with the Tectonia, with the tech, not the Tectonia, but the Ground MZ with the Tectonic Rage is going to do, especially in a trick room, is going to, you know, really deal this incineral. This Kartana uh, does have the Leaf Blade, but in the trick room, it's going to be under, outsped by both the Polygon 2 and the Gatheron, so a double target, especially because it's not Assault Vest, will, you know, KO it. So I really do not like Tom Plater's position here. No, I don't know. I don't like it because Katana shouldn't be able to get the KO from Porygon 2 or Gastrodon, so maybe we're seeing just a safe uh, fake out into Gastrodon, or maybe the double up into Gastrodon, or the double up into Porygon. So he, now Thomas needs to be a risky. So we've seen the Protect on Gastrodon, and Aww. I'm not happy on Thomas, when you see on the right side. So most likely the fake, yeah. was it a fake out? Yeah. There's a fake out target onto the Gastrodon, hoping to get a, get a cheeky KO on that. Um, but we just see a simple Ice Beam onto the Kartana, does a lot of damage, and a Leaf Blade there. Yeah, that's... I think that was Tom Paters out there. Uh, a bit unfortunate, but what can you do? Yeah, this was the, the legendary coin flip predict. Am I doubling up into the Gastron or doubling up into a Porygon? Because both was an option. Uh, doubling a Gastron would be the better result, so safe play by Eric just protecting and trying to attack with Porygon into the Kartana. But seeing not the double KO, so we have to see from Eric a double up into Kartana. Possibly, I mean... We should have, because Katana is able to get probably a KO on both Pokémon. Yeah, that's true. Incineroar isn't really a threat here, and uh, Eric can really deal with it anytime he wants, as long as he keeps the Gastron out on the field. And to do that, he needs a Katana gone. Yeah, probably seeing a switch out from Gastron into an Arcanine for just another safe play. And I'm pretty sure Eric is going for that, because there's no reason not for doing it. But, oh. Yeah, we see the Incineroar switch out to preserve that fake out, probably. Into the Tapu Koko. Um, and we see the tech, uh, the tectonic. Oh no, sorry. We see the oh well, pummeling, uh, because the Gatheron did. Is this a reversal of a trick grab? Did we see? Did we see the uh, top, the Porygon two move? Uh, Tom Pater's grinning that. Oh, it's Z the Tet. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is this two? I'm not entirely sure what that does. <laughs> and we see this scored onto. Uh, <laughs> what does Z Detect do? That's, that's something we've got to research right now. Uh, if it's like Z Protect, it should be just refresh your stats. Oh, no, no, I get it, I get it. Because um, I, I was thinking about switching out Gastrodon into the uh, Arcanine, and Thomas was like predicting the same turn. So getting your Intimidate off onto Katana and doing the Z move Detect refreshes it, and you lose your uh, drop. But seeing from one <laughs> Z move into another Z move, but this time in the Ground Rage, seeing Gastrodon putting up his Z power for the Z move. Yeah, it's just going to target that Tapu Koko. Um, even if the Tapu Koko switches out for Incineroar, you know, the Technologic Rage here is a very, very self But we just see it onto the Kartana, actually. Uh, interesting not to see, just a simple Scald and Ice Beam onto that slot. Uh, and it does knock out the Kartana. Uh, play, Tom plays the shrugs there. He knows he's, he's not really won this. And we see the Ice Beam onto the Tapu Koko. With the Kartana gone and the Gastron still on the field, I, I really don't see uh, how Tom Plater can get, come back from this position. Uh, most likely when you try to just stall out the Trick Room, but anyway, Polygon 2 having their easy and um, recover into the next round, so very safe place by uh, Eric Rios here right now. Still selling the Incineroar here. Uh, even though fake out pressure, you can stall out, maybe if you have Protect on Incineroar, uh, it should be very difficult. Actually, a very clever play that Tom Plater did, that Z Detect, actually, we've just been told, boosts evasion. So he was playing on an out that maybe every single move would miss that Kartana, but every single move didn't miss, and and especially with the uh, uh, Tectonium Z, uh, the Ground DMZ Tectonic Rage from the Gashodon being 100% accurate would uh, KO that Tapu Koko with the evasion boost anyway. So, clever move by Eric Rios, I think. Yeah, definitely. Oh, very good move. Yeah. This is both players from quality, knowing the tags, knowing the moves. So uh, kind of better prepared than we are. But I, I thought like Protect and Detect have like the same. No, apparently not. And we just see the uh, Earthquake there and a Recover on the uh, Porygon there with the trainer waving at the Porygon just beforehand uh, with the Earthquakes happening. And we see the uh, Flare Blitz onto the Porygon too. It's not going to, it's really not going to do anything. Oh, wow, that's quite decent. Uh, but. Yeah, I think the damage has been done at this point, even if the, tri the Trick Room does return back to normal, but Eric Rios can really just set it back up again. Yeah, easily. So, uh, s still interesting to see that 
Eric still has all his four Pokémon, so this is the way when you have such a valuable team, you have like the speed mode and the slow mode, and when you're bringing up a slow mode in the third game, so heavenly and so good. So uh, I like this kind of playstyle because starting in the first match was kind of mixed up fast and slow, Go in the second match with a little bit of the faster mode and the third match in the slow mode. So it's very difficult to predict when you have a player who can bring up fast modes and slow modes in one team. 